welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Woo! If you've ever felt a great pull from the universe and wondered what it is, then do we have the Cosmic Steering and Guidance show for you. Today we'll talk about feeling the pull, healing, heeding the call, and seeing where the universe guides you. That plus we'll talk about Pookie growing stronger, finger puppet books, editing madness, partnerships galore, book royalties, book agents, long COVID, sleep stress, energy tank, womb trauma, and what in the world Betsy Chassis and what the bleep do you know has to do with anything. So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. I'm excited to see you, Michael. It's been a while. It has been a while. Been so a my Woohoo! Woohoo! All right, <laughs> CJ, we're worried about you. How are you doing? Uh, um, so my co I got COVID a month ago, which is why I haven't seen anyone. And um, Third or fourth guest time? I'm sorry? I've, I've many... had three vaccines. And, so and how now... many times have you been sick? Um, with something that I thought was COVID, probably like two or three times. And so throughout this whole period. So this was the real thing. I tested um, positive on both the home test and the PCR test. And, yep. um, and now, unfortunately, I think I have some version of long COVID. How long? I don't know. Um, will it be gone tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's the Taoist kind of, I don't know. And luckily, I don't have brain fog because that would be really hard, but I have an extreme fatigue. So I have an energy tank and I've, what actually has been wonderful, you know, if there's a gift to everything. What um, has been wonderful is that I'm very conscious that I have a limited tank of energy mm -hmm. and I can probably do one big thing a day and I have to rest the rest of the day, which I would never have done normally. Wow. So I'm being very conscious about my energy, which is good. That's one of the positive things from it. But I don't have much energy for a lot. So fatigue is one of my um, – and I have to be very conscious about the people I work I work with or talk to. So I was like, oh, at, m talking to Michael will be energizing. So this is like a plus. You know <laughs> what I mean? There are some people who are like, oh, really? No, no, this is going to be depleting yeah. my tank. So I only can take so much. Um, so anyways, um, I'm really glad to see you, Michael. I'm so um, excited to hear because it's been a long time since I've talked to you and you're almost, where are you on your due date? So we, we moved to uh, Philadelphia area in a week. Mm -hmm. The uh, unofficial due date, because they roll it up from the official one, but you don't actually, there's a whole yeah. lot of semantics behind what's the due date, um, but they say May 7th. And uh, so that's that's a week and a half, two weeks somewhere. <laughs> oh my God! And we're very soon <laughs> coming to a theater near you. Now it's 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 a natural childbirth, so it's it's when baby Hanna decides, up to thirty nine weeks. Once thirty nine weeks hits, because um, it's all story. The story so far from the medical community um, is that she will be born, and within a few days will need. Um, a heart catheter procedure uh, because one of her valves is not working properly. One of her chambers is not getting the blood flow it needs. Um, and so they don't want to go beyond 39 weeks because of that. Um, who knows? This is such an up in the air. It is such a, we are completely attached to the outcome of baby Hana, but how it comes about, we have to let go of. Yeah. Wow. And what's the, so you said you've had two ultrasounds. You just came back from one. Oh, well, we've had many, many uh, ultrasounds and people who go, I'm aghast. You got ultrasounds. Ultrasounds this time saved our baby's life. Without him, there would be no baby Hannah. Um, she's doing great. She's doing great. That's, that's all you can ask for. So what they do right now is they're doing a bio scan to make sure that she's still doing well and that she wouldn't need to come out early. Mm. And, and so she is doing phenomenally well. So so very, very thankful, very, very happy. And, um, you know, it's a week from moving. It's getting exciting. It's exceptionally real. Um, I am both somebody who likes to stretch myself. I like to um, try new things, do new things, put myself out there. On the other home, I also like comfort and I like a lack of change. And so this is, um, <laughs> I'd rather stay home, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather stay home and, and, and 
not have to go move everything down to uh, Philly for a month's time and then come back up. So you have to go there for a month just to make sure everything – So because you don't really know the birthday, um, Hannah's birthday. and then You, you have also... to be there by the hospital because um, when she gives birth, we don't know if she's going to need – if baby Hannah will need emergency surgery or not. And so you have to be by the hospital. And then um, – the word on the street is, and, and I, I, I'm very careful about my words because words have such energy. There is a range of time that baby Hannah could stay in the hospital from a few days to maybe three weeks. And so you need to be living down there. So because we're three hours away here, I can't be, if Jessica's in the cardiac intensive care unit, sitting in a, in a chair with Hannah 24 hours a day, I can't go, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. So um, you you have to kind of plan out your Airbnb or living arrangement so that it can scale. So it could be yeah. like if she, the baby comes naturally three weeks into it, then you have to scale three weeks on the other end. Exactly. And I so see. because you say that, I'm going to double check all my dates, <laughs> but I have it. I have it scheduled for that first period, and then I have a second period, and I don't recall if I have a third period or not, but I want to have that in place. Yeah, because you don't just, want to have to move around and dealing with that. Just in case. And and that's going to be an interesting time period because you're not the only one who's tired right now. It seems to be the zeitgeist of really? people exhausted, whether it's COVID or not. So I had yesterday evening, I got to do a coaching session right before a class. And because it was the only way it fit with the ultrasound today. And I admittedly was exhausted. And I asked my client, can I reschedule? And she said, you're the third person to reschedule today alone out of exhaustion. Wow. So there is a energy right now of a little bit of worn outedness or something. In my case, there's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> An understatement. But I think we're all feeling a little bit of exhaustion right now. So tell me a little bit about um, um, about Pookie. How's she doing? So, so about two months ago, um, when we moved, whatever we moved here, it's it's all a blur. Um, rolling over in bed was painful. Getting out of bed was painful. No. Getting up and down the stairs was painful. And then she um, tested right on the edge of geriatric diabetes. Uh, just just squeaked by under the line. So she started making some big changes to her diet. She didn't have an unhealthy diet, you but big changes. Yeah. Big changes to her diet, and she started exercising. First time she went on the exercise cycle, she hadn't been exercising because she had been bedridden. Yeah, that's what they had under yeah, instructions like, for move. bedridden. Yeah, for a while. Yeah. So she gets on the exercise cycle. She rides with no resistance for one day for maybe twenty minutes and can't sit down for a week. She's on a tennis ball trying to work things oh, out. Poor thing. It's such incredible pain. And now she's up to, I don't know, I've seen her do at least an hour with resistance now. Wow. And this working out, her blood sugar levels have gone down to normal, which is pretty awesome, particularly her fasting number. Number. There's no more pain. She has perfect posture right now. It's yeah. crazy how much she's changed. What's most interesting to me is most doctors would say, as of a couple months ago, well, wherever you are is where you are. You're going to be coasting home in a lot of pain. Don't try to do any more. Jessica, very gently built up into things, didn't accept that I am as I am, and now is so much stronger for whatever is coming next. And there's such a huge lesson in this. I have to say that I was um, working up to the final minute. Like I was taking a spin class at 11. Um, my c-section was scheduled for 12 30 <laughs> and that's just how it went. that's cj <laughs> <laughs> people would actually look at the spin bike you know they'd see the class and then they go in the front you know because they'd see me in the back and i pretty much look the same and they go in the front and they're like oh my god because <laughs> you know, like like jessica is like a big big belly and it's just be hanging out um and I, I would say that my recovery after the surgery was way easier when i was able to work out because people were like, wow, your recovery is so much faster. Well, it's because I was working out the entire time. And even with a C-section, they ask you not to do a lot of movement. And, of course, I was like, well, okay. <laughs> what does not a lot of movement look like? Does that mean, like, walking around the lake is okay tomorrow or, or what? And so the first time I overdid it, and then the second back, and pretty much 
in a very short period because I had been working out, I was, you know, walking a mile, you know, in a week's time after having surgery. So it, it makes a huge difference in terms of how your body just springs back into action. So I know that I know that you should listen to your doctor and I'll just give you anecdotal advice that my experience was that it was really good. But well, the, they're yeah. saying right now, whatever she's doing is fine. Okay. So, and, and they even talked about is as you're going into labor, if we're not sure about things, you can keep pedaling on your bicycle until you're sure about things. And then you would want to come in. So <laughs> <laughs> you I'm know, like, I really? <laughs> and they're like, or you can go for a hike and see if it feels any better. I'm like, really? <laughs> so, you know, one thing that's great. So are you going to have so because you're at home, you can control the whole environment. Is that right? And are, are you um, going to have like th m things hooked up to her and the baby to ma monitor general? We can't health? deliver at home. So oh, okay. we're going to be near the hospital, but at a certain point, and I don't know what that point is yet. And we have a, a meeting with a doula later today. And we, we have so many different meetings to learn about how this all works. Um, at a certain point in, in the, um, uh, it may be the five one one, um, if it's less than five minutes before between contractions, if the contraction is more than a minute long and there's another one in there, um, I'll learn what that third one is or the second one. But 511, if it's more than that, we get to go in. Um, there is a quiet-ish birthing room. Um, it's, a, it's a very special area where she'll deliver. She'll be delivered. There will be doctors on standby, but she'll be delivered with midwives and a doula present. Oh, that's um, fantastic. Because they didn't have that option for me. I mean, it was like, mid, you know, at your home, that's it, or come to the hospital. So I'm, I'm so thrilled that they have these new processes because it's so important for the birth. Like, I still remember when I was, um, they were cutting open my stomach, and because I had a. We should probably have given a warning to people for that one, CJ. <laughs> when, during my C-section. Okay. During my C-section. Um, I remember the doctor saying, like, they were talking, it's like, this is a sacred moment, right? Yeah. And they were talking like, so have you seen the new Keanu Reeves movie? Oh, yeah, I really love, and I'm like, really, people? <laughs> like, you're, you're slicing me open like a deli meat, you know, and then you're like talking as if you're like planning out your weekend plans, and I don't know if you can have your uh, the fact that your dual is going to be there soothing and creating a great environment for everyone is so critical because I didn't have that and I'm so glad that they have that now in in hospitals. We are setting it up and, and life is going to be life. That's a lot of what we're talking about today. But we're setting it up to be a very grounded ceremony of an experience. The right lighting, the right uh, tones, probably Tibetan chimes going on, oh, as, yeah. as you know, the singing bowls, as much as we can, understanding, and I know there are people in the background going, or listening going, <laughs> you'll see, understanding nothing goes according to plan. We get that. It will go as it goes. But the more that we can make this sacred, the better. Yeah. And, and then it is whatever Hannah signed up for is whatever we're going to get, yeah. and that's okay too. Oh, fantastic. I'm I'm just thrilled. The fact that you have all those things on the side, yes, things will go um, in, at not as planned or they'll go exactly as planned. I mean, I'll take I it a, either which way. Whatever it goes is going to be perfect for whatever we're supposed to experience. And, yeah. and we stack the deck in our favor and uh, um, we go from there. Yeah. So tell, tell me about um, what's happening with your show. Sounds so, like a lot. A lot is happening with the show. We've been wanting to expand from our main show to have another show on meditations and another show that's short clips and another show that's that's me on the mic. There is a lot of universe steering and guidance, and there's also pulses of the universe. One pulse was to get the shows started a month, month and a half ago. I didn't follow that energy. I pulled back at a time that it would have been good to step forward, but here we are today. Um, but there is... The universe is very quietly screaming at me right now oh. that my life is not to me just on the mic interviewing others. And we've talked about that before. <clears throat> and we tried a few months ago having uh, just me solo shows on my YouTube channel. The YouTube algorithm didn't actually like that. Mm. So I had to go back to just. Because they were too short. 
Yeah, and it didn't like a combination of shorter shows and longer shows. So it means another channel. Um, we got a um, our book royalty statement, our first big book royalty statement for our book automatic writing. Yeah. And and it was it wasn't that the number was gazunga huge. What it was is a sign of here's what you get if you invest your time here, if you invest your time in writing. And I channel so much, it is, it is dumbfounding. If we just took out of my weekly School of Mystics class, that's a book. If we took out of my Monday YouTube Lives, that's a book. Right there. I've got two books already written, and, and it just keeps coming out. So they're steering towards the book side of things. Mm. Then I had um, Betsy Chassie of What the Bleep Do We Know, which is a beautiful movie and down the rabbit hole. She came out uh, two days ago now to film me for um, a documentary series that she's making called The Galileo Project. Yay! Yeah, it was so, so awesome. I like And that. she's awesome, and she films me, and afterwards she is, and, and I'm saying this in a humble way, I'm not saying, you know, I'm whatever. And, and afterwards she's like, oh my God, we've this is a six series documentary, I've gotta have you in every single one. Yay, Michael! Thank you. Oh. What this is, is I'm struggling so hard and I've been working, having to work, uh, getting to work with my beautiful editors on, on editing and trailers and all of this stuff that just upsets me actually, because it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like what I'm supposed to be doing. And then the book side of things, oh, that's pretty cool. The recording for other side of things, that's really cool. I've had interviews on other people's shows recently where their jaw hits the floor because I'm channeling during that time. Mm -hmm. Betsy gave me this list of questions. First off, it was insane. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the list. It's talking about like boson particles and the latest about physics and this and that and the other. And I'm going, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> and the, the, the professional that she had to interview me is, is a, um, a Hollywood LA newscaster, um, a-lister for this kind of work is at the top of the food chain and she goes are you nervous and i said you know i looked at the questions and realized i don't know a darn thing we'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> i just plugged in i'm not going to be answering it yes. will be answering just yeah, and so it, you and know it great <laughs> but, said, but i didn't know anything so the the point of this is there are things that are feeling painful right now that radically get to be shifted and I've been stuck in them. I'm putting up my quote, my air quotes, feeling like a victim, nobody's a victim, but feeling like I don't have the time to shift. And, and the universe has responded very clearly in automatic writing and saying that's because you're being reactive and being pulled every which way by what appears to need to be done. You get to be proactive on a daily basis and do what you want for you, and you will be out of the reactive situation sooner than you know it. And okay. we're giving you these cookie crumbs, saying, well, how does this feel? Well, with Betsy, it was amazing. With this interview, it was amazing. With the book, it's amazing. With editing stuff, it feels awful. Mm. Uh -huh. That's where we're at. I don't pretend to have the full answer. I know that I've been getting call left after right, just as you do, with people saying, do you want to partner with me on this project? Do you want to partner with me? I've never had this before on another project mm -hmm. to which I'm selective. And at the same time, I'm going, I don't know quite how I'm going to make that fit. Is it something that's going to light me up, though, or be painful? Light me up. Yes. Stepping forward into me. And so I know we're going to look back only a year, max two, maybe less than that time from now. Things will be different. I'll still do, my guess is one interview a week, mm -hmm. but everything will have shifted because I'm going to step forward into the calling I'm getting right now. You know what I um, just heard intuitively in my head is um, the conscious daddy. Like um, there are very few instances that um, – when you you give birth and you have a baby that you're really conscious throughout the whole experience and i i actually think we don't know how to do i didn't know how to do it when when mm -hmm. i was um had our first child or our second child i was better than i think the average person but i really didn't know how to be a conscious parent 
And and particularly for men, they don't really actually have strong role models of what a conscious daddy looks like. Yeah. And even if your short videos were focusing on that and just, you know, like how to be with the baby, you know, there are things that men don't really know. And because they haven't necessarily explored as deeply as you have your feminine side and the nurturing side and the loving side. And so in a lot of ways, probably... Um, I think you could do a great service for society just by showing what it looks like if you're a you know, conscious, loving daddy. Because I don't think we just have all these outdated, antiquated models that no yeah. longer reflect who we are holistically. It reflects who we are as men, you know, who are like, you know, come on, son, you know, daughter, go and like go do some push, you know, like those kinds of things. <laughs> like push yourself hard, you know, get out there. You know, like that kind of thing is the traditional daddy not role. my style <laughs> i know but i'm just saying that you know yeah. and, and we see tons of those models but we don't see a model of what a conscious dad looks like and i think that in the very beginning that would be just such a beautiful gift to the world if you were to share and then and then the misery like you know kind of like i don't know what i'm doing the baby just wants to be with Jessica the whole time. I mm -hmm. feel like I have no role. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> just so you know, this may be what you're going to expect. I've been putting in the time. I get to put in more time. I love what you're saying. Each day until a few days ago, I admit there's there's been some off the wagonage this week. I would be doing uh, about 20 minutes each morning, hands on Jessica's belly, circulating energy, doing healing work on baby Hana each morning when we got up. And um, I got back on the wagon last night of doing finger puppet books oh, for baby geez. Hannah when we go to sleep. Even though she's in the womb, the, the little finger puppet goes, you know, up against the womb. <laughs> <laughs> you do this? Do you do this when you're a little like I, this, the eagle? I haven't done that yet. Okay, yeah. So we, I used to have the, I mean, like, and here I would have this, I would, um, I would sit in the bed with the kids and we'd lie and we'd turn off all the lights and I'd have a flashlight and then I would tell the story. It's like, bunny comes along and then oh. all of a sudden there's a dragon and then and then there's a bird flying and I'd have all these stories and I'd have, um, and then and then I would have like, I, I would call shadow it. Shadow puppets. Yeah, I had shadow puppets and then I would have a laser show, which was, you know, I mean, what kind of laser show would I have? But I had a flashlight and I'd like be making all these <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I love. Of, that was part of the whole thing for our kids, but I, I like the idea. Thing. Conscious Daddy Show. Um, I I get to meet within the next few days. This um, I don't know if he'll be our YouTube manager. That's what I'm guessing. What he is, and I wonder if there's an easy way to add it to the mix. The question is, is it easy? Does it light me up? And if it can meet both of those parameters, easy and light me up, I want to do it. That sounds like it'd be fun. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm just thinking about you. It's like an alignment with what's happening with your life. So there's not a lot of energy that's involved in doing it because you're just going to be doing it. Well, anyway. the question is, who records? <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's just like little short little YouTubes on the phone. Yeah. Like where it's like a, you know, it's like a, it, it can't be a canned moment. It, could, it, it has to be the kind of thing where you're changing a diaper and the kid urinates all over you, you but, know, like but, well, but hold the phone <laughs> on the phone it's just i like, can't hold the phone and change the baby you need and i can't go jessica i'm turning you i i know that you've just given birth and here take the camera <laughs> no you know how they they have the little tripods now that you stick the phone on and you just carry the tripod, put the phone. I mean, it's these low quality. You have to kind of let go of your perfectionism and have these short kind of real life daddyhood so people know what to expect. Because those are the things like I just remember my my husband. I had this little I was filming him and he's like, hello, hello. You know, and he's like playing with the, with our son when he's changing the diapers and they had this elephant and the kids laughing. And then um, so he's just basically like, you know, yucking it up with our son. And then, so I'm recording it because it's so sweet. And then he's like, well, let's change a diaper. And he takes off the diaper. And oh, Caden no. had the last laugh because the urine just hit him right in the face. <laughs> I had it all on camera. And I was just laughing so hard. And those kind of moments. And But because I was recording on the end, you know, you just record and just see what shows up. Yeah. As long as you can be still present and do that. I think, I mean, there's just so many moments that are just so precious or when you look at the diaper you're like how did how did this human yeah. being even produce these colors <laughs> and this material like i can't 
and you get to the point so you're no, so nonplussed. If you think about like cleaning someone's feces, it's the most disgusting thing ever. But when it's your baby, you're like analyzing it down to like, is it mustard? Is it dark brown? <laughs> I know it's coming. I get it. <laughs> I think it would be <laughs> hilarious because you're so funny. Anyways, that's my two cents because it would be fun, I think, to hear you go through that journey. <laughs> so some book, a lot more books. Sounds like you could just take your writings and, like, please make this into a book. And then I, I asked my publisher, and, in fact, I get to contact my publisher again, again this week. And they're like, how about another two-book deal? And I'm like, how about this? Find me the editor that will that will take what I have and help me create magic. And they're like, well, sign on the dotted line. We'll find you the editor. I'm like, no, 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 no. You find me the editor, then we will sign on the dotted line. So hopefully they are hunting at the moment because uh, automatic writing keeps on hitting number one on the best selling chart. Uh, this past week, the Kindle was right. number one uh, channeling and something else, channeling and spirit guides. I mean, it's been angels. So and. You know, who, you know who I'd huge. recommend if I, if you're if you're open to recommendations is you know Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. or Ed of course. Senior. I, and well, actually, Don Miguel Jr. I believe is coming back on Senior. We had on last within the last year. Love him dearly. Yeah, ask him for this editor because like when I'm listening to Don Miguel Ruiz, he's channeling, mm -hmm. and when I look at the his channeled conversations and I look at the book, there's some fantastic editor in in the midst to take these rich, deep beautiful um, passages that I hear on, you know, and, and then basically distilling it down to its quintessence and putting it in a simplified place that people who even aren't familiar with channel writings could hear it and know what to do. So I, I don't know, ask his, I think whoever, if I were to channel a book, that's who I'd want to edit it is whoever his editor is. Cause I think Don Miguel juniors got it. Juniors. Yeah. Since you're yes. talking to him. Cool. I will definitely, definitely look into that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cause it's, we're going to make this pivot and I have, I'm driving down the road on the way back from the ultrasound on the way here. And I'm going, I don't know how to make this change. You don't and have to. the angels are going, yes, you do. And I'm going, tell me. <laughs> and they're like, go into automatic writing. We'll give you more details, but you know how to make it. You're just scared to do it. Well, because you've had so much incredible success with what you've done so far, and you don't want to lose that, right? It's the ego's attachment to what. Well, in was. this case, it's the roof's attachment. There's a desire with our team, with our everything, to keep the income where it is as we pivot. Um, and there is a way to do it. This is the thinking mind getting in the way. However, you and I both know that as soon as a child comes in, then you become. Um, more protective of what you have. Yeah. For a well, child. And then timing. Like even if you were to create a conscious baby group, I bet that would be a ton of people. I mean, there's other revenue opportunities where it's like not a lot of time. Like the whole thing with your um, channel stuff that you're doing with your group, you have a ton of people, not a lot of time. You enjoy doing it. It's like yeah. a, it sounds like it's a fulfilling, rewarding experience for you and everyone else. It's like more of those kinds of moments and less because th the editing, it takes so much time. It takes so much time. I ha actually haven't done. This is going to be my first show in like three months. I have not done. Aside from our shows, I haven't, I'm like on a hiatus because it just takes so much time. And I spend hardly, I only do it once a week and it's yeah. too much time. So, um, yeah, so I think that it will just come to you, Michael. Some new things are on a rise uh, or coming to fruition. It's like a rebirth for you, too. Completely and totally. Yeah. Yesterday I had, um, I've been doing this work with ancestral trauma and um, it's so incredibly painful. Um to to re-experience everything and so you know and it's it's and to see the alignment with what's happening in the transpersonal you know I see people in Ukraine like please help help us you know we're in pain please um and and I'm going through like my well, you, you you cut out one, twice can can you repeat that you you cut out yeah. twice there you said so, I see so people in Ukraine, I've, Ukraine yeah I've been w listening to the news and you and you're hearing you know these like please help us we need help and at the same time I'm actually during the week going through and feeling 
when I was a child and asking for help and my parents not being there and having yeah. to like fend for myself all by myself. And it's just, it's interesting how, you know, the, the, it, the personal becomes a transpersonal, the individual maps to the collective and, you know, healing those wounds of not being heard, even though I was crying out for help and the utter yeah. pain with that and going, oh, wow, that's what's happening in Ukraine as well. And then doing the healing work, which is to feel the pain and the sadness, like it's so sad to feel like you're separate and all alone. And then to take a transcendent view and say, well, you're never alone. This is mm -hmm. something that I can't really ex do that for the Ukraine stuff, but at least for my, you know, because I, I don't really know what they're feeling, but I know at least with my own individual transcendent version, it's, yeah, you're, sometimes you cry for help and it's not there, but, but there are always resources inside of you. And I'm, and beginning to understand that there are inner resources. There's, mm -hmm. a, you know, maybe others won't come to help you, but you can come help yourself. And there's a retinue of other angels, guides, whatever, that are always there that are not visible to the human eye, but that can be felt if you really tune into it. And so I'm really, it's, it's been so interesting. So yesterday, like literally yesterday, so I, I did that work on the pain and I literally slept the whole next day just integrating how much wow. yeah and and so it's uh, is it COVID is I don't even know what it is because I feel like what COVID does the blessing of COVID it brings up all your dark matter mm -hmm. all your dark unprocessed matter and it gives you the opportunity to look at it and transcend it if you were at least work with it um but yesterday i was working and um i just felt such a heaviness in my heart and when i tuned into it um when i was working with the gal that i was working with it was being in the womb and feeling terrified in the womb and so you know if, if what happens when um over time as our body starts armoring up yeah. to protect itself um this is the work from lowen and um, william reich is that we just contract and then when that happens it could happen in the womb which i hadn't even thought about but the the initial tension response is in the womb so if you can kind of just like you're safe it's okay we love you you're filled with light and so regardless of what happens at the time the fact that you've been surrounding um hana with love and light and and good intentions and higher consciousness and good vibration is just providing this container that feels safe at which allows her body to feel safe which who knows what that's going to do to her heart and the needing of surgery just because mm. you're doing that so just because i'm go i went through that experience myself yesterday hypothetically <laughs> it's like feeling the pain in the womb and yeah. it's terrifying I mean, think about it. You're closed in an enclosed space. You don't know where you're going. All of a sudden, lights out. What was was gone, and you're going through some tunnel of, of who knows how long it's going to last. How long is a tunnel? Why is everything dark? Where is mommy? You know, you go through that, and then you get on the other side of being in this void, which is the creative void of which the universe was created, and now baby Hana will be going through and just feeling the other side, and then, like, light and a, a guy with gla you know blue glasses and like oh you know like <laughs> some you know like that whole process um i think just you alone will change that whole like you can prevent your child from having to experience some of the things that i am now like unwinding now and it's and what's so interesting is it's not just you it's like you and all of your ancestors yeah. it's not just you so when you work with baby hana you're healing yourself you're healing your parents you're healing jessica's parents you're healing her i mean you're healing the collective when you're doing that it's just i can't wait to hear about it michael i'm so excited well, you, you've got me wondering is it a good thing is it a not so good thing she comes in and i go woohoo <laughs> <laughs> maybe <I'm> going, eek. <laughs> <laughs> what I know is the more things get energized, mm -hmm. and that's why you're hearing this pace and pulse out of me now, the more things get energized, the more I drop down into a grounded state. Mm -hmm. 
And so chances are I am not going to be in the freaked out state there, even though there might even be good reasons. I'm going to be very, very grounded. Yeah, you're you're the grounding round of this whole thing. I mean, you may have a doula. That's yeah. fine. And I'm sure your doula is fabulous. And it's all you, man. <laughs> you <know? laughs> we got this. <laughs> you got, got it. This. And you totally, you totally have it, Michael. I'm so excited. So uh, you said, so this week and a half, who, so it could be next week we have a show, next week you're having a baby. Well, next next week we get to have a show, assuming that, that Hannah doesn't come early. My, I, I, I've been putting out there what my gut is saying, which could be completely wrong. And, and so all of my credibility is anything. May I go out there? This has nothing to do with automatic writing. Right. But my gut is saying later than sooner. Later my, than sooner. Got yeah. it. Okay. So, so we have our show next week. The day after our show, we drive down to a little town called Cinnamon, sort of like cinnamon. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> so it's it's on the Jersey side of of the river from Philly, and we set up shop there on the water. Um, there there are kayaks available to us. So if tidal, when the tide is up, I can go paddle. Um, there'll be birds. There's right. also a highway nearby, but there are birds and water. I'll take it. Yeah. And um, then we go to the hospital on Monday for our next checkup. And then Friday, I think it would be that Friday. So that's, I, don't know, I think that's two weeks from today or so um, is the actual date they're guessing she'll come in. Next it's, Friday, two Fridays from now. So, so yeah, May 7th, we're recording this on April 22nd. Totally up to Hana, no pressure at all. And then that's the only, I'm a logistics guy. Yeah. After that, I don't know how to organize the logistics of Jessica in the hospital, baby in the hospital, me going back and forth. I, it's like an interview, uh, like Betsy's interview. I don't need to know. It will unfold. I'll just be there through it. I, I, Michael. What I will say is I, I planned everything, and no, none of my plans manifested. So any, <laughs> yeah. any planning you do, just I'm throw out the window. It's about being present. It's like that time when you were in your van, right? Like, who the heck knows? I mean, in some ways, you can plan, but, like, I don't even know how important it is to plan, and you know I love planning. So, um, Well, the one thing I want to plan, and I'm going to go from this interview, and we're going to look at it more today, and we're going to look at it more tomorrow, is we still don't know because we rented this place just to get through childbirth. Uh, <laughs> and we're actually renting two places to get through childbirth. Where do we go from here? Yeah. And my guess, my belief is a magical place on the lake is going to open up and we're going to stay here for six months, get through all the doctor's visits and everything that we do. And then we will move oh, to wait, New so England. You're, you're going to be leaving this entire place that you're in right now, moving to Philly. So, well, we're still renting it. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to put Jessica's parents in here for a month and they're going to watch see. kitties. And we're going to take Rue with us because he would be like, <laughs> and he's going to come with us to Philly. Holy crap. <laughs> Can't bring him in the hospital. I've said he's a registered service animal. So far, I haven't gotten yeah, anywhere. No, I don't think so. I wouldn't be happy if I had a rooster in my hospital. <laughs> oh, Michael. Well, I am so thrilled for you. I hope to talk to you next week. Um, thank you so much for making the time. I'm so glad that we talked. It's been a long time. It goes both ways. Yeah. Any last words for people? Um, I just have um, the last word for you, which is that just sending, may your birth be easy, beautiful, um, and full of um, peace and love. Thank you. <laughs> so for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Saying, be well, have fun, heed the call when you're pulled by the universe. Don't worry about the exact plans. Universe will take care of the details. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. <laughs>